All right. Hello, everybody. Um, here we are. I'm not by myself, so you get to you get to, you don't have to look at me the whole time. Um, I'm very happy to welcome Professor Elias Rodriguez uh, from Sarah Lawrence. Um, and I'm going to say a little bit. Uh, well, you can you, you go ahead and say hi, Elias. Hi, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Elias, part of the excitement for me of having Elias here, in addition to his expertise on what he'll he'll tell us about uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, uh, is that he once upon a time was a SLE student himself at, at Stanford. Um, and and then what did you end up majoring in, Elias? What did I? I guess English. <laughs> I guess I must have majored in English. Yeah. <laughs> and then what was your? So now you're at Sarah Lawrence. So what was the trajectory to uh, being a professor at Sarah Lawrence? Yeah, I um, I worked a little bit at a magazine, at a literary magazine. I taught high school for two years, um, and then I went to graduate school, um, and I studied literature there. I studied African American literature, and that was a P so that was a PhD in English. Yeah, literature. that was still in English. Yeah. It was a PhD yeah. in English at the University of Pennsylvania. And then, so what is your so now that you're a professor, um, you get to decide what kinds of things you teach. So what what's the Kind of range of things you you teach at Sarah Lawrence. It's a good question. I mean, in general, you know, I do really teach effectively African American literature from 1619 to the present. But I primarily teach 20th and 21st century literature. I have a heavy emphasis on fiction and the novel, um, and I'm often thinking about questions such as social transformation, gender, um, obviously race, class, um, and. Yeah, I mean, a couple of classes I have taught. I taught a class on representations of freedom in African American poetry. Um, I taught a class a class on Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. Um, I taught a class on Black feminist literature and its relationship to the Cold War. Um, so those sorts of things. Yeah, awesome. And so um, I asked Professor Rodriguez to come to Brooklyn last year when we taught um, a version of the Slee course that all of you students are doing now with just a, a class classroom in Brooklyn. And uh, when you came to the class, as we, as we talked about um, in been inviting you back, you quoted uh, Gwendolyn Brooks poem, um, which I found very powerful. And when I didn't know much about her, went and learned more. And so we've decided to incorporate some poetry from her into this, into the run of the course this year. So so yeah, let's just start maybe with you telling us uh, a bit about Gwendolyn Brooks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brooks is really a fascinating person. You know, I mean, she's kind of the like dean of African-American literature for much of the 20th century, partially because she lives for quite a long time. I mean, she's born in Topeka, Kansas in 1917, and she lives until um, the latter part of the 20th century, quite late into the 20th century. Her father worked as a janitor and her mother worked as a teacher. And though she was born in Kansas, they moved to the south side of Chicago, which mm -hmm. features quite prominently in her literature. I mean, she's quite interested in the sort of historically black neighborhoods in Chicago and the south side, uh, maybe especially in Bronzeville. And as an aside, I heard from somebody um, who lived in Chicago in her neighborhood in the 80s that she kind of remained something of a figure in the community. I mean, I think someone told me they were coming home from school and they would see, you know, as they referred to her, Miss Gwendolyn you know, sitting on the porch or looking out their window and they would say hello and she would say hello, <laughs> you know. Um, so she was interested and she was invested in that community, right? I mean, she wasn't just writing about it, but it remained a part of her. Um, and at a young age, she became quite interested in writing. Her mom, um, this may be apocryphal, but her mom said she was going to be the Lady Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Dunbar having been, at that point, the most accomplished African-American poet. And so in her teen years, she begins publishing. She wrote for the Chicago Defender um, as a rather young person, and she received early encouragement from you know, authors like Langston Hughes, James Walden Johnson, and other people who were kind of towering poets of the Harlem Renaissance. And you know, by 1944, so she would be 27 at that time, 26 or 27, depending on her birthday, um, she was published in Poetry Magazine. You know, And she worked as a typist as a young adult, but primarily she wrote. And she didn't go to college to write because she thought, I know I'm interested in writing. I know how to write. I love writing. So I'm just going to write. Um, and in 1945, she published her first collection, A Street in Bronzeville, which was named for Chicago neighborhood. And in 1950, she won the Pulitzer for Annie Allen. And she effectively kind of dominates um, 
the critical reception of that decade, right? I mean, she writes the novel Maud Martha uh, in the 50s. She then writes The Bee Meters, uh, which has the most famous, most anthologized poem of hers, right? We Real Cool. Um, and then there's an eight year period where she kind of disappears. Um, but I suppose I'm maybe getting ahead of myself before we get into what happens after she comes back. 